I primarily out. dress in on some days. That's what I meant by sometimes. I primarily dress on some days for sexual desire, both of myself, of looking at myself and feeling like I am a sexual being and for what other people give to me, the sexual oh, desire. Then, that, then they, I would say, no, then I would say that you're, uh, no, I would say that you're absolutely violating other people's consent then. Lots to do. Uh, first and foremost, if the camera's bothering you, we apologize. We're waiting on a new one. Second, some trigger warnings. In this conversation, we are going to be talking about some very, very rough things that were shared by a particular person. We will not talk, be talking about the specific content of that. But there will be mentions of the term CSA, which is child sexual abuse. There will be mentions of rape. There will be mentions of kink there'll be mentions of transphobia and yeah i think that covers most of them um i am missing yes um probably won't go into detail but there was harassment ah uh, yes harassment um, and attacking and also probably a mention about um suicide suicide and pedophilia as well yep uh so pedophilia harassment suicide just in case people didn't hear i got a little quiet there on the mic um this is gonna be a heavy night so gaslighting specifically a, a, it just abuse if, so many trigger warnings <laughs> so yeah okay we're gonna get into some more stuff as we go along with kind of this beginning stuff um but i apologize if we can't cover all the triggers okay Hopefully we'll kind of give you guys some more stuff to kind of deal as we go through the segment um, and some ideas on how to, you know, handle some of this stuff. So. Yeah. So first, Zena and I want to lay down some ground rules. There are probably people in chat, as well as in YouTube chat, that are aware of the content of what was discussed yesterday in the debate between Doe and uh, Riley Grace Rashong. I am not in any way going to allow anyone here to be triggered by the content that Doe shared. That is Doe's information. That is Doe's story to tell. And I'm going to make this abundantly clear as a boundary. If you share any of that content in either of our chats, it will be a ban. While I am more than happy to talk about Doe and the way that Doe was mistreated by... Riley Gray Shoshong, including really stupid accusations. And the fact that Doe had to bring up an incredibly horrific thing to push back on what can only be described as an incomprehensible argument. We are not going to talk about that specific content. If you would like to go see Doe's stream, I will put the link on it in the link's um, document below. Another rule is going to be that if you are getting triggered or if this content is causing problems for you, you need to step away. No man moding it, no trying to be the hero, no trying to stick your way through it. If you are struggling, leave. Yeah, that is a directly turn off the stream. Please contact people, you know, trusted people around you, um, a therapist, you know, or someone professional, or please call one of the lifelines. If you have stuff struggling up, uh, struggling and that it's coming up for you definitely contact one of the crisis lines unfortunately our mod staff is not trained as such okay they're volunteers they're friends um and so they're just not able to you know give you that actual support so please please use the crisis lines um we do have a, a bang crisis um command that just just ran in chat so if you need those they are there yeah, if you're having anything come up, you can just hit exclamation crisis and it will bring up all three of those numbers for people to contact. So please utilize that, okay? Um, the other thing is uh, do not post in chat 
personal stories either. Um, this is something that could spin out and definitely trigger a lot of people really easily, and that's what we don't want, okay? We, yeah, that's how you get a positive feedback loop of trauma. Yeah, yeah, we, we want this to be as safe as possible. You know, obviously this will be uncomfortable, but safe as possible nonetheless. Um, and, uh, yeah. So, so I think I think that sets up a boundary very clearly. And that's what this is. This is a boundary. Yeah. This is not just we're streamers and we're setting down a rule because we're trying to be all authorities and shit. No. These are boundaries. Personal ones for me. Having to go through all this content in the last several days was hard as crap. And I don't want to wade into it unless we're going to do so in a way that's safe. Okay? I know this seems like a lot of lead up, but guess what? We need it. So with the rules covered... Zena, you wanted to cover self-care. Um, yeah, so self-care especially is going to be really important. And in that is kind of some ways to deal with that. Um, uh, you know, some ideas that will apply to just dealing with difficult content in the first place. Um, always take care of your basics, okay? Food, water, sleep. Your, your brain muscle needs energy to function okay you got to take care of those basics um after that um remembering breathing practices you know a meditation all right um things like slowly in through the nose and then breathe slowly out through the mouth um if you find yourself getting kind of anxious you know maybe picking um face flush maybe some other symptoms maybe um you know you know some of your personal triggers right um, you can start doing that. We also, there's another video on our channel called the container meditation that might help too. Um, may I add something? Yeah. If you notice you're getting triggered and you're not quite sure why, make sure you are hydrated. Make sure you have food, a snack, some nuts, some cheese, whatever. Um, just see if there's something you're missing. If you're low on sleep, come back to this video later. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think it's really important too, to take breaks. So, like just said, you can always come back to this later. We will be posting the VODs as soon as possible. Um, we have, it, again, there is no shame if you are going, I need to take a break and come back. That's what you should do. That's proper self-care here. Um, and I think making sure to have ways to decompress is a really big one. You know, for Jess and I, that might look like kind of chatting with some people and just hanging out, easy things. Uh, there's some really fun YouTubers like The Click. Um, and, uh, what's the other one you like? One topic at a time. The click and one topic at a time. Like, don't they just go through re subreddits reading silly memes? It's good. Uh, so making sure you've got time to decompress, give yourself some time to, you know, let go of what's, you know, the difficult stuff that you're engaging with. So we should probably wrap that up from there. Yeah, I and think that's the big ones. Yeah, I think those cover our bases. Mm -hmm. Um, so... Here's the history of things, and we'll try to cover everything. If I miss something, Zena, please let me know. Chat as well. This story is going to be about a particular YouTuber by the name of Riley Grace Rashong. Riley Grace Rashong is a trans woman and a student of law who is um, a streamer. She was well known in the leftist circles as being someone in Vosh's chat, in Demon Mama's chat, she was somebody who was interactive with a bunch of folks, including Luxander, and um, she was known for being a, at least a liberal or a lefty and somebody who was trying to be interactive with as many people as possible. This included, unfortunately, people like Calvin Guerra. Now, let's be very, very clear. There is a way in which Riley was someone that Xena and I actually really liked. She was a person who was out here trying to argue for trans stuff from a legal perspective and was actually quite good at it. At least that's what the appearance. Okay? That all fell apart when the Fire Nation attacked her. In this case... Apparently, Riley and Demon Mama's communities were fused or overlapped at one point heavily. 
And what had happened was Demon Mama and Riley had a discussion, which is right there, what is a woman? Debating Demon Mama and my entire chat. During this three-hour debate, which was two hours with Demon Mama, one hour with chat, and over the course of an eight or... After I want to both, say 10 hour stream. Both yeah. of them were coming off of streams or debates for several hours. Yeah, they were on there for at least five or six hours at that yeah. point. And so what happened was, is they got into an argument. And the content of that argument was, what is a woman? Demon Mama came from the self-ID perspective, which is fair. That's a good policy. Makes sense. I agree with it on a policy level, not on an existential one, but on a policy level. As I said earlier, my views on this have shifted a bit. And essentially, Riley came from a sort of mismatched version of performative theory. This conversation culminated in Riley trying to lead Demon Mama through a series of premises. And when they got to the conclusion, because Demon Mama refused to accept that conclusion... Riley hung up on her. As Chad is reminding me, yes, DM tried to end the conversation multiple times. Trying to de-escalate, trying to de-escalate, and eventually just, as Demon Mama is wont to do, trolling a bit because if you're in a crap situation, what else are you going to do? After this debate, Riley had a pretty big falling out with her community. A bunch of people left shortly after that. There was a lot of stuff going on. If you want to see Demon Mama's video about this, I highly suggest you look at it. There's issues with agreements about the videos being not posted. And yeah. then posted anyways. Yeah, Demon Mama wasn't going to post the, the VOD of this. Riley did anyway. And it, it just became a spiral. Then, RGR had a conversation with Destiny, in which Destiny was giving debate tips, but also kind of, you know, scratching that itch he seems to have about hating Demon Mama, as he is wont to do. And it was basically Riley playing some ESO while, you know, Destiny coming back after watching a bit, coming back after watching a bit, and then kind of just filling in stuff. The problem is, is that this kind of established where things were going. At this point, Demon Mama, after being talked about negatively for so long, and now members of DGG being involved in the situation, and this is one of many times they have harassed Demon Mama, DM released a video explaining her side of things, explaining the situation. It was very well done. Riley has claimed that this was false. Now, where we come into this situation is back at the very beginning of this channel, if you look, probably one of the things we covered like first or second weekend, maybe third, I did a discussion about trying to learn some helpful lessons from that debate, specifically talking about the fact that I believe that Riley had gotten incredibly triggered. I speculated at the reasons why she was triggered, and I also talked about some of the ways that both people could have de-escalated the situation better, including just hanging up the call. I tried to be fair to both, both of these women because I respected them both deeply. That has subsequently changed, and I will explain more, at least for one of them. We didn't really talk about Riley for a while, though DM came up in conversations about other stuff, and... Where we really started seeing some, you know, a lot of discussion was back in June. In June, that old, ugly thing came up again of Kinky Kinky Pride. Pride. And while I don't have it here, because I think she took it down, we'll cover Riley's take on it in a minute, but I just want to overview that real quick. So, Xena, would you kind of just give a quick synopsis on our, our Kinky Pride takes? I think they were pretty fair. I think we were trying to be pretty fair to everybody. 
So what were what, can you just give people a synopsis of that? Um, our kink at Pride takes had a lot to do with um using the Fry's model from Planned Parenthood um for consent um and then that you know kind of using that as a framework um and also figuring eventually coming to using finding a solution that would work practically in the real world um we set a two-state solution at the time so this being um having you know 18 and up events um properly you know set up at at an event location uh to host you know kinky and 18 and up stuff um you know easily and effectively without having to worry about affecting other people um who may not be interested in that um no that's really solid yeah that was about the big parts of it was there some more details you wanted to share in there yeah just i was gonna say the original video was set up to respond to vosh and point out the fact that well oh, i you. understand vosh's takes we didn't feel that he was being particularly fair and also we tried to um essentially rephrase his in a much more effective way the reason why we want the consent model is because a we really care about it and b if that's going to be the model that a lot of people are using and this is going to be relevant later then we should probably engage with it right that was our thought i also have trauma around kink i'm going to be very clear with that up front i'm not going to go into details but i have a lot of trauma around kink and my initial reactions if you ask my wonderful community were not the best. They became much more tempered. I've become much more accepting and much better about this. People like, um, God, Beyond Safe Words, Demon Mama, and a few other people, Quinn. Hypno Trans Girl, Quinn, a number of people really kind of tempered my view on this. Myself included. Once we kind of got a chance to kind of, <laughs> there was a lot of like pausing and, and thinking and, and having to talk stuff out. We actually had to plan that segment, actually like prep ahead of time, uh, which for us is a lot. Um, I don't have shit. Absolutely. You know, so there's, there's a lot there with that. Um, you know, figuring out a way to talk about this stuff, being inclusive of the times when not everybody is going to be comfortable, right? And where do we, you know, put that line as far as, um, you know, self-expression from people and also, you know, when that intercedes with other people, right? In very variety of formats. So I think that was kind of our big thing was really looking at that more closely. Yeah. So we put out our video. It was a banger. Everyone loved it. Everyone agreed. We were right as usual. And uh, there, right. was, there was no point. There was no pushback. And we brought peace to all factions of the Kink of Pride discourse. It was settled. Everyone was, everyone was agreed. Everyone had their land. Two state solution. Great stuff. Uh, folks, we got them. So... <laughs> Then, towards July, things got weird. In July, Riley Gershashong was back on various um, panels and apparently was touting the notion that if you wear kink gear in front of kids, not only did she go with the consent model we did, but she went right to the thing of you are engaging in pedophilia or you are uh, encouraging it unconsciously or stupidly or something to that effect. This was an awful take. It was taking what we tried to do as a good faith interpretation so that we could try to meet everyone where they were at. And it basically went into hyper-moralizing um, religiosity that essentially tried to negatively make, um, it would basically negatively frame anyone who even remotely participated in kink as essentially being pedophiles. One of the people who pushed back on Riley, besides obviously Demon Mama, was Doe. Doe is a streamer. I can't pronounce that word, but that's the name for their, uh, their, uh, excuse me, It's Twitch stream. Sorry, It's... No, I am going to be clear here. Um, it, It's is not pronouns that I use that often. I will be self-correcting as much as possible. Please understand that Jess and I are managing, like, several different very big throughout thought trails to get you guys all the information, but we will be absolutely doing the best we can. And to correcting each and... other as much as possible. Yeah. So, I mean, look at Doe. Doe is cute. Absolutely. This not, picture is great. Not to mention Doe is super intelligent. Like, Doe's good people. So, mm -hmm. 
Uh, beyond safe words, it. <laughs> or not beyond safe words. Oh, no, Amy Lee, you're talking about Eva Levine. Anyway. So I was just... I'm, yeah. on, the, I'm on the move I'm for gonna... it, it's pronouns. Anyway. We haven't said it yet, but it is going to be hard for us to engage with chat because, again, trying to read several lines of text and also focus is hard. So just, just some clarity here. Yeah, so... Just as FYI, Doe is a streamer who uses it, its pronouns, um, focuses a lot on anarchism, um, post-Marxist post -Marxist critiques, and is also a survivor of um, CSA, child sexual abuse. That becomes relevant later. Bear with us. So, also is musically talented, as we found out. Oh, super good. Like, that was super fun, by the way. That part was neat. Anyway, so, coming back to... <laughs> Coming back to this, so one of the things that happened was Doe was one of the people that responded to RGR. And because RGR's arguments were so amazingly idiotic, so um, like so easy to tear down. What essentially happened was Doe made the argument that, oh, well, I guess you're get engaging in something horrible if you're just wearing flip-flops and your partner has, like, a, a foot fetish. Because the implication, at least from RGR, was that engaging in any kind of sexual, act se sexual activity with children present is wrong. But the problem is, is that when you say that, you can mean a lot of things. You can talk about out-and-out -out fucking, but you also could be talking about things such as, I don't know, like... You know, wearing a low-cut shirt and your partner enjoys it. I like boobs. Boobs are good. I'm a big fan. I like boobs. Kissing, Viet Pam says, yes, it's true. So, here's the thing. Doe is correct. RGR used this to go on a riff, which we had unknowingly used the clip of her doing this when we wanted to sort of do our video. We did a video telling Riley to put down the sword, and essentially this was the second video we did on RGR, kind of talking about why... Her takes were nonsensical. They were just dumb. They were bad. They were based around this notion of utter puritanism and mor uh, moralism that took nothing into consideration of childhood development. It took nothing into consideration of what actual experts like Beyond Safe Word said or what we said. It took nothing into consideration about what kinky people have to go through and deal with. And we'll talk about that more with Beyond Safe Words about the actual implications of things like Riley later. But... Yeah. So watch for that for part two. These are going to be divided into two parts. So Riley went on a tear about this and essentially said that anyone who has a take like this is either knowingly engaging in um, pedophilia or is unknowingly doing so. It was really, really awful. So because RGR basically did the whole dog whistle of they're a pedo, but I'm not going to say they're a pedo out loud because I don't know how inferences work. I'll just play dumb. Yeah, yeah. Doe got a fuck ton of harassment. A lot of this from DGG and a lot of other sectors of the internet because everyone immediately lashes out anytime the word pedo is thrown out instead of actually, like, keeping their reason. It's really weird. Also, you can hate that shit and also react like an adult. Absolutely. Also, this stream of ours is not an excuse to go harass anyone else. I don't... I know we're talking about awful things right now. Do not harass anyone. I forget, We forgot that in the rules. No harassment. Do not do that. So, we put out our video. It was a banger. We were right. Everyone agreed. We brought peace again, once again, to all sides of the situation. And unbeknownst to us, Doe was getting harassed, and this was awful. Now, I know that a lot of things... A lot of different groups were harassing Doe, and I do know, as far as I'm aware, that there was a point where Doe nearly took its life. I don't know if those things are connected, because I haven't been able to find any connectors online, but I'm not going to say that being harassed by um, DGG and RGR's communities is not going to have some effect, especially when you're running around the internet inferring that a person is a pedophile. And again, this is not just towards Doe. This is anyone that engages in kink. Because by RGR's argument... If I wear that belly shirt with the clips, the ones that are sitting back there in a pile because I suck at putting away my clothes, and I wear that on stream, and I'm like, I get something emotionally sexually off of, like, you guys seeing me. Like, I'm definitely going to get when I wear that Sailor School outfit later. Um, 
that is me engaging in a non-consensual act. I am actually harming all of you. And by definition, if a child was watching, I would be engaging in something very horrible. Um, to which I respond with this, of course, what the hell are we talking about? Riley made awful arguments, and this led to some really bad outcomes. So, forward. About a month or so later, Riley started getting into a fight and apparently decided to go after Doe again. This time, using Doe as a proxy for attacking Demon Mama. Demon Mama had been arguing... Uh, against the notion, I know there was a few other streamers, Vosh included, that had been, you know, occasionally brought up things about, like, neo-pronouns and xenogender, stuff like that. And Riley went on a tear talking about how xenogenders aren't real and basically doing everything up to and including, or up to, but of not including, essentially invalidating non-binary identities as uh, if they are outside of the masculine-feminine bi uh, spectrum. So if you are someone who exists as no gender, which is not on that spectrum, if you exist as somebody who is um, in any way, shape, or form xenogender or just in the fucking weeds like myself and Xena, you're not real. And the case study for this was, to my knowledge, Doe. So twice now, once inadvertently, and I can't say how intentional it is because I can't read minds, but then directly intention intentionally using Doe as a proxy to engage in more war with frickin' Demon Mama. Doe got more harassment and more shit against it. This is when I became aware of this stuff, and that's when we made our video, talking about the fact that actually, no, the rhetoric that Riley Grace Rashong was sharing on her Twitter before she deleted all of it again or whatever the hell she keeps doing basically pointed out that her conclusions didn't actually follow from the sources she was citing the sources she cited specifically talked about genders existing outside of the masculine feminine paradigm but she was so busy lashing out at a non-binary person who didn't do shit wrong to try to hurt another non-binary trans woman that she didn't stop to think about that. And she inadvertently sort of in, in, uh, invalidated non-binary identities. And I don't mean that like in the made-up way people say about Contra or any other nonsense like that. I mean, that's the lead-in. This isn't like infer inferring random things and thinking there are dog whistles in a Contra Points video. Go over that video again. This is what she said. So that was the last video we did of Riley, and then Riley calmed down and did whatever she did. And I stopped paying attention to Riley because I didn't want to focus on one trans woman. There are certain people that after a while I come to the realization about I don't want to engage with. Because I want to just leave it be. Well, that had that changed. Um, oh. Oh my goodness. So er, later er, earlier this week, we had, or the last week, we had a thing come up in our our Discord about the fact that Demon Mama was streaming, and apparently RGR had started more drama against Demon Mama. We weren't going to cover this initially because it was, I mean, it's beneath us. Like, Demon mm -hmm. Mama handled it like a champ. I totally support how she did, dealt with it. I've showed Xena the short clip. I've watched the full, full clip. It was fine. It's good. I love it. Thanks. Yeah, it felt like it would just be like drama chasing for us. Like it already that that part seemed to be handled at the moment, you know. And I say at the moment because sure enough, events following that. Yeah, Demon Mama's a big girl. Mm. She can handle herself. But if you want to go see that, that's on Demon Mama's channel. They have it actually done. Yeah, what would we even comment on? Yeah, just I agree with Demon Mama. End of video. Um, <laughs> so. What ended up happening was, and I'll be really clear with the thing on that real quick. It does sound like on the stream often I'm saying, like, I agree with Demon Mama everything. I don't. The mandatory school stuff, I have disagreements with. There are other takes that Demon Mama has that I have disagreements with. But I still support her as a trans woman and somebody who I think does legitimate good in the space. And, to be perfectly honest, she's someone I'm acquainted with at least a few little bit in DMs. And I'm, like, at least online friends with a number of her mods... 
Like, I'm not going to just, I, I can't, like, uh, yeah, I mean, there is a lot of, like, mixing of communities. And again, we can have disagreements with people occasionally and still have the understanding that people are doing good work for the world and absolutely worth it. Yeah, like someone some, can be a net good. Some disagreement is good and helpful. We need that. Well, this is why I can um, talk shit about Vosh using the wrong terminology of shame versus guilt. I, I can push back and say that I think his takes on neo pronouns and 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 xenogenders aren't great. Which, by the way, I've noticed he's softened a lot lately, as to he did with his kink at pride takes. He tends to come out hard on something and then backs off on it. He tends to soft it, let it go into the background, and he seems to improve on it. Cool. Maybe our video helped. Maybe it didn't. Who knows? But I can still respect a person if they disagree with me on something. So, we thought this was over. Until Saturday, yesterday, we heard that Doe and RGR were going to be having a debate talking about the allegations that Riley refuted and that Doe had said Riley had put upon it. Namely, Riley a sort of sideways accusing Doe of being a pedophile. And then also there was some inference about discussing gender because Riley does not believe that non-binary identities truly exist. And I guess really, really hates its, its pronouns for reasons. We'll get to that more in a minute. And here's where we get into some of the real content. That's the history. That's where we're at right now. Riley has significantly over the course of, God, what now? Eight months? Nine months? Essentially become a more and more toxic person who has lashed out at everyone. One thing we didn't bring up here was, and I think we talked about in the sword video, was Riley's lashing out at socialist because she didn't like the term eat the rich because she's a lib. She wants to be one of the rich, right? So if we eat them, that's a problem for her. And so when a bunch of socialists said you're being a derp, what happened was is she lost her shit. And yeah, a bunch of people just stopped interacting with her, including Vosh. Of course, a number, number, a number of people, because she basically said that all socialists are bad, okay? So this woman has been having a belt down. And this is one of the reasons I didn't want to cover, cover the Demon Mama stuff. Me and Zena talked about this is mm -hmm. not only is it low-hanging fruit, not only is it drama and we really wouldn't have anything to say on it, but additionally, and I'm saying this with as best I can without crossing any lines, I am legitimately concerned for RGR's mental health because whatever this stuff around Kink at Pride is has seems to be based around some personal and very real trigger. And I don't know what that's about. And I'm not going to in any way guess what that's about. I'm not trying to armchair psychology anyone. Not going to get that fucking uh, <laughs> accusation oh. again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But again, there's something wrong there. And I really think that we need to figure out a better way to engage with this. I don't know how to do that. I don't know what to do with that. That's not how the internet seems to work. People don't really give a crap about mental health. What they do is they make jokes online. I don't have a problem with jokes online as long as we're not harassing or attacking anyone. Again, do not bother RGR. Do not bother Demon Mama. Do not. Thank you. Or Doe. Leave Doe alone. Yeah, absolutely. Like, if that's not clear from this. Leave the musical forest puppy alone. So we'll get into the content first and foremost of the RGR Doe debate. Xena, what are your thoughts? Where do you want to start with that? Because we have, we have lots of notes. I have lots of notes definitely scattered throughout this notebook. Um, some of it's, you know, a lot of it's first thoughts, but we'll try and synthesize it. Actually, I'll just leave this one on the um, screen because this is a fantastic. So... There's kind of a couple different through lines, all right, that I've noticed. There's the arguments themselves that Riley is making, all right? Um, and then also there is how those arguments were made, right? And so I think we noticed a lot of different tactics that we would see with abusive people. <laughs> uh, you know, some we mentioned gaslighting um, in the... Uh, in the trigger warnings. Um, yeah. 
so I think those are kind of the big through lines. I guess, where do you feel like starting, Jess? So I think I, I want to start first and foremost with the tactics used by RGR, because I think that's going to be yeah. the most effective to kind of make our point. Well, and I think it's important to understand how all of that went down. Um, the use of these tactics may be particularly difficult to watch that video and see like Doe be on the receiving end going through this stuff. So, and this is what um, I, this is what actually someone pointed out to us. And you know what? I think it's really important. A YouTuber by the name of Innuendo Studios put this out a while back talking about the ways in which the alt-right argues and uses logic. This is an amazing playlist. For the love of God, please watch it. I think I still have to go through it with Xena again. I've listened to all of it. I don't think you have. Correct. Yeah, I think I've been through parts of this, but this definitely just has been through more of it. Correct. So what's interesting and ironic is that this is actually a playlist saved on, our, on Riley's channel, if I remember correctly, or at least was. And it's interesting that she would do that, considering the fact that she uses a majority of these tactics. During the debate with Doe, I think it's really important to notice what actually our friend and one of our mods said, who's familiar with RGR, and that is, these are all things that she did during that debate. She controlled the conversation, the steer of it. She kept referring back to the fact that this thing is saying you're doing this in front of kids, and thus this is pedophilia, and leaving no room for talking. The first half of that debate, before Doe kind of, like, went hard, was RGR basically just talking over Doe and interrupting a hundred times, which, by the way, also comes with never play defense. Riley is so aggro in her conversation with Doe that she constantly, constantly, never, ever lets, lets Doe have a fucking use of the time and never lets them ex never lets it explain where it's coming from or what its intention is. It's an immediate assumption of bad faith and assumption of almost condemnation out the gate. I mean, fuck, if Riley was alive in the 1400s, she would have been part of the Malice Malavacarum, the harem of or is it the Hammer of Witches? Harem Harem of Witches would be neat. Um yeah, yeah. Like, this is how inqui in inqui uh, Inquisitor-like this was, right? Never play defense. Control the conversation. Ship of Theseus. So one of the things RGR loves to do is pick at an argument, at everything. Well, what do we mean by this? What do we mean by this? Until eventually the original argument isn't what it used to be. It's actually really strange. This particularly makes it really hard for anyone on the watchers to even, like, track those videos. Um, I know Jez and I noted how difficult it was just to stay focused on it because of that tact, you know, because of that tactic, especially. Um, yeah. It was very hard to even go, what are we even doing anymore? Right? And then, you know, Riley would just say something horrendously awful occasionally, and we'd be like, what? If I remember this one, always a bigger fish refers to the fact that Essentially, there's this idea that one of the reasons, one of the differences between liberals and conservatives is that liberals and leftists believe that there are certain things that we can get rid of out of society. We can try to get rid of sexism. We can try to get rid of racism. But from their perspective, from the conservative perspective, or what I would say a pathological perspective, I say that as a regular citizen and a person with a master's degree, not as a clinician, just saying. I say that's pathological. I say that's crazy because... They believe that there's got to be some level of it. There's always going to be murder. There's always going to be some level of sexism, some level of racism. So there's no point in striving for them. Think, think about that. That makes sense. That's the way literally right-leaning people think. What Riley uses is an odd version of that because what it turns into is this. Anytime Riley comes out swinging about a person's take, she blows it up to the most extreme proportions possible to make it as absolutely aggressive as humanly possible. Well, that isn't necessarily the bigger fish motif. What it does, in fact, do is sort of create this problem where there's never an idea of what... Oh, 
of what the actual harm of these things are. This is something we'll talk about with Beyond Safe Words and on and on. But the fact is, is that it sort of creates this thing where there is never a bigger fish because there's nothing bigger than this. This is just somehow huge. I highly recommend these because they're really, really go. They're really, really good. Can't talk today. Um, my point with this is, is that Riley is using the same tactics that we see from alt writers. It's just that simple. And there's such a level of aggression, such a level of force. You can go back and look at our original video. Like, what Guy Who Could says in chat is correct. Riley isn't actually engaging in debate. Riley is actually acting as a lawyer trying to cross-examine a witness and forcing a yes or no answer because that is to some degree what... That, that's to some degree the only thing she knows. She's trying to force someone on the stand to give yes or no answers. I've been somebody who's almost had to be on the stand for um, custody battles. This is how they train you to do yes or no's. But this isn't law, Riley. This is not, like, this is not a court law, a court of law. This is a debate in which you've been accused of inferring that someone is a pedophile. And you're backing off of it and trying to force the topic as hard as humanly possible. Uh, listen, chat said she's catastrophizing, essentially. I would actually say it's a combination of those things. Again, I like to think of it as inquisitorial. She's essentially going with anything must be toxic if it doesn't immediately meet this standard of perfection. But when people point out how absurd her positions are, she back ups and says, well, that's not what I was meaning. That's not what I was saying. We'll get to that later when we talk about her uh, debate with Vosh. But that is a big part of this. Yeah, she's trying to form a binary answer out of nuanced takes, something this channel has never been particularly fucking happy with. So that's the first thing I want to point out, is that she is using a lot of these same fucking tactics. Um, I can't remember which mainstreaming is. There are maybe more here that she's done. I highly recommend this playlist. I'll put it with the links. Um, Xena, what were your... What, what's, what's next on the list? Um... You want to start on that? Because that's way more... I mean, it's also my topic, but... I'd like to hear your thoughts because you have more experience. So when we talk about, you know, abuse and these different tactics, there isn't just one way to think of this. Um, okay. Abuse can be very large scale. All right. We know that with, you know, fascism and on a large governmental scale, we see, you know, abuses there. It could be on, it could also be, you know, on a very small scale, person to person, okay? Um, and so a lot of the things that I saw Riley doing were also things that, no, I've experienced dealing with an abusive parental unit, okay? When I've done trainings and they go over with you, hey, here's some ways that these things work. No, this is exactly a lot of what this reminds me of. Um, so, you know, a lot of this started, this whole stream started with Riley, con you know, attempting to exert some control in the situation by arriving what, almost an hour and a half late. Yeah, she chose to have an, she chose to have another debate beforehand for some ludicrous reason and then left Doe waiting there for like an hour, hour and a half. We know well, we were in the chat the whole time. It wasn't just that though. Like Riley was a was like, "Hey, I need to restart my Discord." And then peaced no, out no, for No, no, Doe said that. I'm, Doe restarted their dis its Discord because it was having sound issues. It then came back, and Riley was just gone for that whole time. Yeah, yeah, yes, that is correct. So, there was those issues. That's how we got the musical interlude, which was, by the way, really fun. Do you're really talented. It was really cool. Um, God, I would have been so much ahead. Like, we just ended there, and Riley just no-showed up. But, you know, here we are. Um, so, yeah, so arriving late. Numerous times during this debate... Riley muted the call without even saying anything because you know, she's also streaming on her end. Um, and so there's just just silence where like Doe didn't even know what was happening until Doe kind of went, wait a minute. Um, you know, there's a lot of not allowing the other person to talk. Um, you know, so I think that was basically the whole thing where like if Doe got even a little bit into like explaining something, right? Like, cut it off yeah i'll just call it what it is it was um, abusive yeah i mean yeah that's where i'm going 
Um, uh, um, so there's a lot, and, and some of these go together. But there's a lot of moving the goalpost. Riley kept creating new and changing new situations. In fact, I was in that chat joking about Riley's OC being the worst because it kept on if Joe responded with something, Riley added another scenario, another piece, another part, and just kept adding and adding and adding and adding and adding. And this happened like 10 times in a row, okay? And it absolutely made the initial debate like impossible to have because you, how can you respond when the first thing isn't even the same anymore, okay? Um, and so, no, this absolutely kind of got into, you know, gaslighting. Um... Yeah, so I can explain the gaslighting claim real quick. Yeah. So I said this in the chat and I stand by it. I have been very critical of the left as far as their tendencies to use the term gaslighting and projection because they tend to use them wrong. For something to be gaslighting, someone has to exert a force on you where they are attempting to rewrite reality or tell you something different than you actually know. It also requires somebody coming in and attempting to not only act in a positive manner towards you and then withhold that positivity, but it also requires a level of control over the conversation. There are many people that use gaslighting as a term wrong. And I've talked shit about this a number of times. That's That false version of gaslighting is not what happened here. What I saw Riley do was gaslighting. Riley did not in any way show up to this in good faith. And I can, claim, I can make that claim I stand by it because... One, coming in, trying to be civil and decent, that's how you should be in a debate, that's great, except then disappearing, controlling the narrative, basically shutting things down. And essentially what ends up happening is, is that Doe is kind of left there hanging. Again, it's, it's literally social conditioning. This is how social psychology works. Beyond safer, tell me if I'm wrong, but doesn't that kind of fit that narrative? You come in really nice, everything's great, and then... You use that opportunity for Doe to have to reset their Discord, and it essentially does a little bit of, like, a variation, I would say, of love bombing. Not to the same extent, but, yeah. Yep. It's fucking gaslighting. Got. Because then, Riley comes in and not only says, that wasn't my intention, I refute that. I'm gonna make fun of that voice forever. But, on top of that, <laughs> but on top of that, then goes, that's not what you intended. Essentially, he's trying to tell Doe what Doe intended. Hold on, someone gave us a link. I do want to see what this is, because it probably is super related. The, yeah, I was going to say, we can actually... We, this is, Give me a second. Um, the gayest fesh. I was hearing her, 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 my, her uh, admitting this later, I see. This is from that video. For the long haul, right? Um, and the reason why I opened up this in order to debate whoever is because if you have seen my most recent video on my main channel, and... I mean, like, if you want to believe that I acted in bad faith, then I would disagree with you, but, you know, I can't do anything to change your mind, probably. Um, I did try to engage in good faith, and to an extent, I was aware going in that, like, with Doe, with Malcolm, with Malcolm it wasn't that bad. I felt like that was a fine conversation. With Doe, and especially with Vosh, that they were not going to engage with what I was saying in good faith. And I think it's pretty reasonably apparent that that's the case, especially with Vosh, like, speculating about my mindset a lot. Like, that was really fucking weird. Nope. Your mindset. Yeah, people speculate all about your mindset and your sexuality. Yeah. Um, and ways that are offensive and offend me by proxy. Yeah. Like, that's really fucking weird. I think you acted in good faith to a default. You defended your beliefs even when you knew it looked bad. Yeah. Um, no, and that's because I've... I think that there's a problem when you are engaging with bad faith actors. So let me describe 
in my main the the video in my main on my main channel. I'm going to describe what I would call is the RGR. Oh. Okay, here's where she goes into her whole why you don't have to be in good faith. So I'm going to point this out. That was just a literal tacit acknowledgement of the fact that uh, this is the yeah. This is coming into the situation bad faith. You assume that they already were, which is in and of itself a bad faith action. I'm just going to say that. You can't really come into a situation and assume the person's going to be this. You have to give them benefit of the doubt. That is how an argument and debate work. I actually think that if I wanted to be wholly honest, I guess if you wanted to be really stringent, I'm going to say Doe came in in absolute good faith. Despite the fact that Doe was the injured party, Doe came in in absolute good faith. Again, the most nicest forest puppy just came in was very very solid very decent it was good stuff now here's the thing one could make the argument from a stringent perspective that vosh wasn't but that's because vosh watched this debate too i know because we saw him in chat well i had a few other things on my list about that too yeah we'll come back to that in just a second but essentially yeah. what i'll say about this is he probably came in more angry because, well, I think that after watching that, Vosh came to the same conclusion we did, that Riley just spent the last hour trying to control a conversation as well as gaslighting and refuting the actual responsibility of what she did. That is RGR. RGR made an inference that Doe was a Doe was a pedophile and then didn't even have the spine to back it. So I want you to just recognize that that is her words, her tiredly talking to, I believe, her girlfriend. Acknowledging that she went into this in the poorest way possible because they're not going to listen to me or and I want to be really clear on this. You've mentioned this to me in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. I understand some people don't feel listened to and there are times where that is true. But there are also times where people, and Zena brought this up, and I'll let Zena speak more about it, but this, this, the short version of this is, a lot of times people say, you're not listening to me. And this happens in our fights. A lot. <laughs> yeah. You know what yeah. you mean is, you're not agreeing with me. RGR doesn't want us to listen, because we are listening. We are hearing you, Riley. We understand your arguments. They're just piss poor. And you're throwing people under the bus. And we'll get more into that. Especially with Beyond Safe Words, because thoughts like this and beliefs like this are incredibly harmful. But again, those are the thoughts. So, Zena, do you want to go more into that, or is there more here that you want to jump off into? Um, no, I just think that assertion, like, especially coming from Riley, that, like, you're not listening to me, you're not doing this, no one is listening to me, also is, a, is an abuse tactic. Especially when, no, Riley, you have so many eyes on you right now, watching this stuff. You are absolutely being heard on this stuff. Um, again, just not agreeing. Um, and I think one of the biggest tactics too, that, that happened and and God, this one's a rough one, but going until the other person agrees, not letting the argument drop until there is just complete and whole agreement, you know, even a, okay, we can kind of meet on like a halfway point really didn't happen in any of this. That was huge. And so both of these arguments or, you know, debates, uh, with both uh, Doe and Vosh, ended with Riley being hung up on. Okay, there was no way Riley was going to stop. Oh uh, yeah, Doe had to do it because Riley kept muting Doe because Doe kept trying to advocate for itself, Yep. and Riley didn't like that. And this is, we should probably get into the, the sort of um. sucker, the, the, the sort of right hook that kind of took it back into Doe's corner. Um... I think the only other thing I was going to say on this topic was there was also so much denying what happened on Riley's part. Riley absolutely, like, we watched Riley in Vosh's chat say that things didn't happen that did or went, oh, well, I had that conversation with Doe. Maybe, you know, it was someone else. A lot of those things happened. Riley was was in the video, not in the chat, but yeah. I'm sorry, in the video, um, chatting with them. While Doe was in chat arguing back, yeah. No, 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 no. Like, there was so many times where Riley just denied what had just happened um just absolutely out the gate and just great look riley we all just watched you on video fantastic via yeah, pam i'll check that out in a little bit well we'll just keep it moving because we're this um, is gonna be long no this is actually this is what i've got on so the this particularly the like 
speech tactics part of this. Yeah. So, so now I want to get into the form for the, the actual, like, if you were watching this like a boxing match, what happened? During the first part, Riley would basically not let Doe talk. Anytime Doe brought up anything, Riley would immediately take it back to a binary of yes or no, and then bring up these absurd hypotheticals. By the way, new rule. If you debate Riley Grace or Shang, you need to take away the word hypothetical. And primary. Primary and hypothetical. If I never hear those fucking words again, it'll be too soon. Do not allow her to go into weird-ass hypotheticals because they're full of projection, the real word, and nonsense. Well, it was just such an annihil of, like, reality, right? I know, We're gonna it, get well, into that. it was these absurd things. Yeah, we'll get into that in a second. <laughs> but where this argument shifted... And this is what I want you to all take into consideration, because this is a big part of what we're going to be getting into with Beyond Safe Words is when you watch that debate. Where it turns around for Doe is Doe brings up the fact that Doe is a survivor of uh, childhood sexual abuse and goes into detail about that abuse. Which, by the way, it shouldn't have had to. But the fact of the matter is Riley was so up her own ass into abstract hypotheticals that Doe had to bring it back down to reality and actually had to shock Riley into fucking shutting up. Well, and again, the, the Riley continually claiming, you know, I want to protect kids in some format, right? Like saying something to that equivalent constantly. And then Doe pointing out children. that your, work, your actions do not protect kids. And in fact, what you're doing is essentially leading to more harm. Yep. And then, of course, Riley, in order to backtrack from this, tries to A, say that Doe's experiences as a child sexual abuse survivor isn't relevant to the topic of child sexual abuse in the form of this supposed kink at Pride take. But on top of that, then mutes it to try to silence it about these topics. Do you understand how fucked that is? I don't tend to moralize much on this stream. But as a childhood sexual assault, sexual abuse survivor, I was horrified to watch essentially a non-binary person get silenced about their childhood sexual abuse experiences and the sheer relevance to that situation and pointing out why Riley's hypotheticals didn't work because the minute they smashed into reality, they exploded. Yeah. And from there on, it was basically just back up, back up, back up, try to take back the control in the conversation, and then eventually just muting. Doe then mute and uh, deafened, them, de deafened itself on Discord. And then basically because Riley was being more aggressive and shitty, Doe just ended it. And you know what? Doe won that debate. Full stop. Anyone who's a goddamn human being watches that debate knows for a fact that's the case. And so the thing is, that's the structure of this, is that Doe didn't get really a strong word in edgewise at the beginning until Doe brought up its personal experiences. And then Riley finally shut up and backed off for at least a few seconds because Riley's fucking hypotheticals died. Um, Viet Pam, yes, you can post links in that chat. I can't open all of them right now because we're trying to keep on track. Um... If you think it's something relevant, I can check it out. But if it's a video, I'm going to say no because we want to keep it going. We can check out some towards the end or with Beyond Safe Words. Also, there's just... There's a humanity piece missing for me here. Like, seriously, if you're in, like, a situation with another person and they're showing... They're sharing something deeply personal like that and you're just... No, I'm just going to run over it because it doesn't help my argument. No, fuck you. I'm sorry. You're... Like, that's just an absolute shitty response. No, you absolutely need to take a minute to be human and be compassionate. And Joe absolutely deserved that. And Riley, fuck you for not doing that. That was really shitty. There you go. Yeah. So what else did we notice about that debate? Um, I think that's... I think that's it on that one. Yeah, we can a come lot back of my to notes are with the other Riley one, yeah. and Vosh's debate. Because Vosh really nailed this. Yeah. Um... I do want to go through some of this relatively quick because I think we'll get into it with Beyond Safe Words. Sure, we can kind of zoom through that mess. So so again, the overview here is that debate that happened, which is on um, Doe's Twitch stream. I'll bring Doe's stuff up real quick. 
Um, do do do. Don't forget to By hydrate, the way, friends. Some of these things in legal trouble: better call Riley, kissing in public, barefoot at the park, identifying as a deer, gimp suits at Pride. Some of these are great. Public displays of affection, death. What? Like this, these are these are these memes are killer. Th- those uh, you know, two empty bubbles is is pretty telling in this. Yeah. Yeah, but if you want to see Doe stuff, uh, their cha- it's cha- it's it's uh it's Twitch stream is e x. Uh, I L I A E X. I'm not going to pretend to try to spell to, to pronounce that. My pronunciations mm-hmm. suck. So that's that's that. That was that debate. It's on there. It is fantastic. We should get some water real quick. Yeah, sure. take a drink. Some kind of. I spent like forty dollars in. I spent like forty dollars in like tier one subs for people on that chat oh yeah that that super happened because doe's great and that sucked um very rona i almost spit up water everywhere that was because of you just saying um <laughs> uh can i have the the yeah, caffeine the... one um oh this piece right here also is a thing that came up um this one came up in Fosh's. Yeah, we'll get to that in just a second. Yeah. So this was that debate. We're going to leave that one there. Round that, two. But round two. So what that, are we doing here? That night, um, Vosh was doing a gaming stream and had watched this whole thing unfold and was pretty, pretty much on Doe's side. Made it very clear that Doe did fabulously, which it did. And Doe uh, rocked it. Just rocked it. It was an absolute knockout. Um... And again, hanging up is not necessarily a indication of uh, defeat. It is an indication that this conversation is over. Boundaries suck. Deal with it, people who are abusive. Yeah. Yeah, right? I don't have to stay on the phone with you if you're just going to keep retur- get, staying the same nonsense. So Vosh had this conversation with Riley that was spectacular in, 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 in the fact of Riley's fail- failure. We're going to get into this one quick and then go from there. Our goal with this particular piece, by the way is to get through this, and then we're going to go on to the second part where we discuss the the CSA implications with, um, and the psychological implications of this with uh, Beyond Safe Word. So you want to stay tuned for that segment. So, all right, love, go. Hit, hit us with your best shot. Whatever which one you feel like is the strongest to start with. Oh, my goodness. Um, There's a bit more meat because uh, Riley had to say more actual, like, full sentences because Vosh kind of... Pulled it in that direction. You know, Vosh has a bit of a different debate style than Doe. Um, Though to state, Doe was in Vosh's chat. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, it's... This so so it wasn't like Doe wasn't present. <laughs> By the way, welcome to all the new viewers. We're at 69, view- 69 viewers right now. Please like the video, all that stuff. Um, you're welcome to donate. Streamlabs.com slash transgirltherapist slash tip. I know we're talking about hard stuff, but we really appreciate any kind of support. You can also donate on the website. There's a donate button. You can also get a tier one through four sub. There's lots of ways to help us. Um, the mods can put it out there if you'd like. Anthony, I agree. RGR couldn't bully, bully Vosh too because Vosh. That's fair. Um, so. RGR made a lot of arguments. Do you want to sum up that in a couple sentences? And then maybe I can touch on a few of these notes. So a lot of the discussion with a lot of the discussion between Vosh and um, Riley essentially came down to Riley doing what Riley loves best, throwing out an absurd number of hypotheticals, Vosh then answering how those hypotheticals actually don't mean anything, Riley getting offended and then creating a new hypothetical. This happens Ad nauseum. so many times. And it, it was... gets to the point where Vosh stops being interested in interested in those type of hypotheticals because Riley keeps using them to come back to a thing. Riley's continued argument in this whole thing is Riley doesn't think anyone's listening. Riley is wrong. We're listening. You're just being silly. And the fact is, Vosh pointed this out by breaking through all those things. If you have, for example, one of the hypotheticals was the foot fetish thing. If you are a person who has a partner who has a foot fetish. Actually, I'll even go with something much more, much more clearer. I wear a low-cut top. My partner 
loves my boobs. Huge fan. Just absolutely number one fan. Just super duper. highest Patreon level. Just huge. Yeah. And I wear a low cut shirt. And I'm doing this expressly to tease and, and, and excite them. And we're out in public. And I walk by some kids. My tits are not out. But I'm showing a lot of cleavage because my chest sexually entices my partner by Riley's own arguments. It essentially breaks down to I am now engaging in a horrific act. Yes, Ellie, no booba. Yeah. Because if you follow the analogy from the foot fetish thing, it comes from the same thing. Now, Riley would say those aren't analogous because Riley has a trigger around kink. And I'll explain why. Every time the hypothetical is brought back to something much more realistic. Here's the foot fetish one. Here's the makeout one. The foot fetish one is if you wear no shoes and your partner has a foot fetish, has a foot fetish, you are sexually enticing them. Now, Riley would keep trying to push it to excite them to the point of orgasm. But again, that gets dicey because some people can just like that. And honestly, it's not like you're stimulating the public. That's against the law. So we can ignore that entire portion of this because that wasn't even in the original, original Doe tweet. The fact of the matter is, if you are sexually enticing, sexually exciting your partner by not wearing some damn shoes, that is no different than making out with them. Now, we wouldn't say that you're engaging in some sort of like pedophilia by proxy if you're if you kiss your partner in front of a kid i'm not even saying like full-on make out like just kiss them like when i kiss xena there's a part of that that is sexual because xena's my fucking partner by riley's argument this would lead to the logic that i'm engaging in some kind of awful sex act if i kiss my partner before we go to sleep and my dog sees it sees it am i engaging in zoophilia because that's what our that that's what riley's saying and so Vosh kept breaking these hypotheticals again and again over his knee again. And what it comes down to is. It comes down to the fact that basically it seems like Riley is willing to make this distinguishment between traditional sex acts and kink. If it's involving some sort of fetish, it must be bad. Well, and again, fetish for Riley definitely meant like sex and the way that she kept framing it was implying to the point of orgasm well sex is the point of orgasm right like traditional like hey you know almost like intercourse like this is the same stuff i would hear from like you know school people like when they try to teach you sex ed in school and like the only thing that they know how to teach you is intercourse exists and that's it this none of her arguments actually seem to make sense with reality okay um, unless you're coming from an incredibly puritanical mindset, which, you know, okay. I, I, if I go with that for a second, a lot of people in the U S have grown up with really shitty sex ed. A lot of schools only teach you, uh, abstinence only. Okay. Maybe, you know, what intercourse is from that. Maybe you know what economy is fine, but that's all they teach you. And that's just not the whole picture. And we know that when we actually think about sexuality as a whole, um, there's a whole lot that goes into that, right? And we can teach that in a way that's, you know, age appropriate. And Riley's got no idea about any of this. Most of her arguments came down to her, her kind of having this framing that she had to create this line and create these rules, even though we already have them in society. We already have them on the books. And yeah, does various systems at play need improvement? Absolutely. But no, we absolutely have this education out there. There there are programs for, you know, age-appropriate sex education that absolutely do a better job. And no, we don't need Riley, who has no fucking idea what she's on about, to be the arbiter of all of these rules. Yeah. Especially when she doesn't have the background or... or the actual knowledge about kink to make these declarations there are people smarter than her and more knowledgeable about kink that can make these statements and understand how they work the problem is is that there's two separate big issues here this is what Vosh pointed out one riley's arguments are nonsensical hey fesh but on top of it those arguments led to doe getting harassed 
which is not okay. So we get into this problem that essentially, no matter what hypothetical came up, Riley had to take it to the worst extreme possible, and it always had to be something kink-related, because that's where this seems to be as an issue. I'll be honest, it really does feel puritanical. It really does well, feel it, like an issue with kink. It started boiling down to just thought police. She couldn't back up her argument so much to the point where even just thinking of something in your own brain, your own privacy, wasn't okay. That was the weirdest part of this was, you know, she kept making it about, oh, well, like, if somebody thinks about somebody while they're masturbating, okay, well, generally no one knows. You have no idea. It doesn't affect you. Doesn't... People think of all sorts of weird shit when they're masturbating, okay? Like, let's just be real here. There we go. I'll be honest. If you see someone cute, like, walking down the street, and then you go home and rub one out, you've done no ethical issue. There's no ethical issue with that. I'm just going to make it very clear. Am I going to think... Eh, I'd be a little weirded out if you did it to me, sure, but the simple fact of the matter is, is that people are going to do that. I've made jokes about this on Twitter. If you've jerked off to me this year, please give me a tip. Because yeah. I deserve one. Well, it was I mean, look at me. But right? the fact of the matter is, is that this is where it gets down to, is like, RGR is not okay, and actually made the connect, the analog, try to make these analogous, between stealing a picture of somebody when they're not looking or aware and jerking off to that to jerking off to another person inside your own head. Well, and then she would reframe it to be, well, now you're telling the person that you took a picture of them and did all of this. So now you're actually harassing them, except she didn't actually understand that, like, where the harassment was actually happening in that situation. Because she kept changing it. <sighs> yeah, I mean, this is the problem is, is that by Riley's own views, essentially, like, anything becomes... A, a harmful a harmful act based on her discretion which is really unclear and the fact of the matter is is like this stuff has real world consequences it did for doe for fuck's sakes yeah what um, else you got there do you want me to mention oh the hair trigger yeah yeah i'm also gonna say real quick and you guys can totally say i'm like doing the woke scold thing or i'm totally doing this xena called this out but i actually wholly agree with it do you want to make that argument or do you want me to? Um, the start of it had to do with the hair. If you'll, if you'll help set me up here. The, the start yeah, of it yeah. had to do with this whole thing with, like, hair triggers accidentally orgasming in so, public. So the argument was, essentially, is if you're making out with somebody and they accidentally orgasm, is that, is that a bad thing in Riley's idea? And the idea was no, because it was accidental. Except if you know they do it, then you get into this weird milieu that she couldn't answer. And the thing is, you get into this problem of the same thing with the foot fetish. If you just happen to wear fucking Crocs that day and your partner sees your feet and they just go off because you knew they had that, all of a sudden you're engaging in some kind of, like, violation of Kantian law. Which, well, by the way, fuck Kant's morals. Kant sucks. Kant's, I really prefer Kant's epistemology and metaphysics, but his ethics are garbage. Just a side note, if you're a Kantian, you think like a child. So that's the context for that. Um, yeah, I just found this whole argument to just be demonizing, like, regular human experiences. I gotta be honest, okay? Jess is on estrogen, all right? We all know that, okay? Her sexuality is doing the opposite thing that mine's doing, usually. I have enough tea in my system that, no, just randomly being turned on is a thing that happens to me. That is a regular bodily function for me now. It's weird. But it's just a thing, and the, I, Riley's arguments absolutely demonizes all of this. And no, we don't need more arguments demonizing trans men, thank you. We don't need that. Alright? And it just sucks, because, like, no, this absolutely de demonizes, you know, teenage boys at the same time. Like, you can't always help what your body's doing. You just can't. <sighs> Tia Matt, unmotivated equipment tests exist. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and I just found myself so disgusted, because I'm like, you probably haven't even thought this far through everything that like, no, like bodies just do things. Thank you. They do. Yeah. And we, we literally, again, I think we can, we, we've kind of made these points. Is there anything else we want to cover or do we want to wrap this part up? Let's wrap this part up because it is about time to talk to Beyonce safe words. Yeah. Um, so if you're watching this as the video, this is part one, you should finish this video 
and then go on to that one. All right, that next one will be released probably the day after. Um, I'll try to get them up as quickly as I can. But what I want to be really clear about this is, is that Riley's behavior at silencing a survivor of child sex abuse is evident. This is the act of an abuser. And again, I don't use that term lightly. I, in this stream, have really tried to avoid ever using that term on someone, but I watched it. The language that Riley used during that discussion and debate is the same language I would see transphobic parents use towards their kids. Oh my god, we didn't even get with Riley's, like, bringing up the constant repeated threats that she's gonna have to talk about, um... We're gonna get to gender, gender. soon. Meh. We're gonna talk about this. We're gonna have to talk about this. No. Joe doesn't owe anyone anything, any explanation about their gender, about its gender. Sorry. Like, no. Doe is just super valid and cool. Like, fuck you, Riley. Like, that's not okay. And you should know better. You're also a trans person. You should know better. Oh, yeah. And if you want to see a really interesting thing during that debate with Vosh, watch how many times Riley steps in it about the about the it, its pronouns. I'm not saying we don't make mistakes either. But the fact of the matter that Riley is getting super salty and then making these vague allusions to threat is really interesting. Holy no, no, no. shit. We're at least, we are absolutely on board with fucking pronouns. Just making my brain work. And, it's the same with any neo you pronoun. Know. You learn them over time. It's yeah. fine. So with that said, I just want to make this clear. Do not harass Riley. Do not bother her. Do not at her. I legitimately think this is a woman dealing with some very real issues. And I haven't seen someone go on this large of a, large of a screed attacking another trans person since... Lily Orchard went after freaking Contra. When trans people make videos like this where they just tear each other down, it is a violence. The clip ship thing that Lily made was violence against Contra, and this is no different. That debate was incredibly toxic. And the fact that Doe came out of it, again, it's like fucking Shawshank Redemption. Crawled through a mile of shit, came out clean on the other side. I'm not answering that, Danny. So, <laughs> with that said, I really hope you guys appreciated this. And let me be very clear. If you like this video, like and subscribe. You'll see something again asking again. Please, please, please feel free to donate. Feel free to support us. We really do love all of you. And please take care of yourselves after this one. Yeah, we know it's a hard one. Definitely take a break. Do self-care. Yes. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Absolutely. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Also, consider donating to us. You can support us on our website, transgirltherapist.org. You can also help us on our Patreon, link below. Or you can become a member here on YouTube. Um, thank you so much for watching.